In this video, we're going to continue building the drawing application we started in part one of this video series. Uh, as you can see up on screen now, I've got where we got to uh, in the last video. Uh, so this lovely creation on screen here, uh, as you can see, I can drag around and create uh, lines all day if I want to. Uh, but what we're going to do in this video is extend this a little bit so that uh, we can use different brush sizes and different colors as well. Uh, so this is probably going to be a pretty simplistic implementation, um, I guess with more of a focus on something maybe kids could use, where we're just going to have some predefined uh, brush sizes that we can switch between and then just a few colors uh, rather than having a full you know, color picker style thing and uh, the ability to set the brush to any size. And I'm also not going to focus too much on making this look uh, entirely pretty in this video. Uh, don't want to spend too much time fiddling around on screen with things so uh, what I'll probably do is just do something really crude and basic in this video and uh, in the sort of follow-up blog post that I usually do I'll, um, I'll tidy things up a bit and make things look a bit prettier. So let's get started with this. Uh, so what I'm thinking that I'll do is I'll add some toolbars probably a toolbar at the top and a toolbar at the bottom and we'll use that to store our brush sizes and the, the color palette. So let's jump back into the uh, component again. And what I'm going to do here is actually, uh, yeah, we'll see we'll see what happens when I throw in some toolbars here. I'm not sure how, where they'll sit by default. Um, so I put one at the top and one at the bottom and we'll just see what happens there. So we've got a toolbar at the top so that, uh, the other one's probably off the bottom of the screen, I think. Yes. Yeah, so uh, what I'm going to do with these is um, position them absolutely. And I want them to float over the top of the canvas rather than uh, pushing it down. Uh, so by giving an absolute position, that's going to kind of remove it from the normal flow of the screen. Uh, so I'll set that to absolute. This is just a test here. Uh, top zero for that one. Yeah, cool. So now the canvas still takes up the full screen, but the ion toolbar is sitting on top of it. And then for the bottom one, we should be able to do the same, except we'll do position absolute and we'll do um, bottom zero. Yeah, cool. So now we have the bar at the bottom and a bar at the top. Uh, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that on uh, on the video, uh, but yeah, there's just a slight gray bar at the top and at the bottom here. So we'll add the styles for those. Um, I'll give this a, um, I'll just give this a class of uh, top toolbar. I'll uh, we'll make it an ID. And this one can be bottom toolbar. And then in the SCSS file here, we'll just add some styles for those. So we have top toolbar. And that will be position absolute top, oops, top zero. And then we'll just do the same for the bottom toolbar should be position absolute and bottom zero. And so this just means bottom zero means we want to display it zero pixels from the bottom. Uh, top zero means we want to display it zero pixels from the top. So we'll save that now and we'll refresh it to make sure that that uh, applied correctly. Cool, so it looked like that is, uh, that's working fine. So what we want to do now is um, provide a way for users to switch between brush sizes and colors. So I'm going to come back into here again, and I'm going to have a bunch of predefined uh, colors. So I'm going to create another member variable here called uh, available colors. And I'm just going to pre-fill that with um, Actually, I might assign that in the constructor just to make things a bit neater. So in here, I'll set uh, this dot available colors uh, to be an array. And we're just going to put a few colors in here that the uh, the users can use. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to bring up the flat UI colors site just to grab a few uh, values. Uh, so we're just going to use a few of the colors here and just throw them into our array. So I'll grab this uh, turquoise color. as a blue and purple 
And we'll grab two more. We'll get uh, the carrot color. And we'll use red as well. Whoa, what is that? Elisa Rin? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Okay. Uh, so we have the available colors. And we're also going to have a current color, which will be what the user is actually currently using. And by default, uh, we'll set that to, um, I should probably set that to a string. We'll just set it to the, I think that was the turquoise color. So that can be the default. And then so down here where we uh, set the stroke style, we'll just change that to be uh, whatever the current color is. So if we come back into the app now, we should uh, be able to draw just a single color, but it should be turquoise now instead of black. And there we go. So we have the, the turquoise color now that we can use. Uh, so obviously now we want to provide a way for the user to uh, switch between those colors. And so what I'm going to do here is add some buttons to our toolbar that we added. So we'll add uh, ion buttons. And then we're going to create a button for every uh, color that there is. Uh, so we'll do button and we'll add an ng4 to that. And we'll say let color of, and what did we call that? Uh, available colors. So let color of available colors. And we want that to have the ion. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll give the ion button styling. And just for now, we'll just, um, uh, we'll just use the text of the color uh, just to make sure that this is all working properly. Uh, so we'll see what happens uh, with that. And I uh, don't know if it's working there. What have I done wrong? Let's try and find the button in here. Oh yes, we have all of our buttons. They're just uh, tiny. Now I'm not sure why they are so small. Is the I'm probably not getting the... Um, oh, of course. Switching between American and normal English, I guess. Um, yeah, there we go. That's better. All right, so um, yes, I'm not. I'm not actually sure how I want that to look right now um, in terms of how we display the the button. So I am just going to keep. Um, uh, we'll just use color. So I'm just going to keep it as the text for now, which is going to be pretty ugly and boring. But uh, I don't want to come up with something that I don't like. So uh, I'll wait till I do the blog post and I'll come up with some kind of pretty way to display these. But Right now, you just click the um, uh, the hex value of whatever color you want to use, which is obviously terrible for usability, but we'll fix it later. So now that we have that, we're just going to add in a, a, a click event binding here, and we're going to trigger a change, uh, change color function. And we'll just pass in whatever color has been selected. And then we'll jump back into here and implement that function. Uh, we'll just throw it in at the top here. And then we'll just change uh, this dot current color and we'll just set that to whatever uh, the color that is being passed in is. And so that should allow us to switch between the various colors. So let's try that now. I'll draw just with our default turquoise color. Now if I click this, hopefully, yeah, it changes to orange, some blue and red. Um, so why don't, uh, let's try and draw an Arnic logo. Perfect. Awesome, look how great that looks. Uh, so yeah, we basically have uh, most of our drawing application here now. We just need to add the ability to change uh, sizes as well. And obviously we could add in some more colors if we wanted to as well. And as I mentioned before, even though I'm not going to do it in this video, you could add a more advanced sort of color picker in so you could change, uh, you know, use any color rather than a, a predefined set of colors. So let's, let's focus on doing those brush sizes now. So we're basically going to do a, a similar thing. Um, we'll just set it to um, three, three sizes for now. So we have in the template here, uh, we have this toolbar with some buttons. Uh, we're going to do the same thing in the bottom toolbar, uh, but rather than looping through an array of uh, values, we're just going to hard code uh, just three different values here. So we'll get rid of that and we'll do 
change this to change size. And we'll just apply a, a number to this. So we'll set it to uh, perhaps five can be small. And then we'll also create uh, maybe medium large and extra large buttons. So we'll have that at 10, uh, 20, and 50. So we'll change these to small, medium, large, and extra large. And then we'll just add those that change size function in here. And we should be able to just set, um, I don't actually have a, a size variable yet. So we'll add that in. Uh, we'll add a size, any equals, um, that's gonna be a number rather. And what did we have? We had 10 by default. So we'll set it to 10 by default. And instead of using that here, we'll use this dot size instead. And I'm gonna make that actually brush size to be a little bit more specific. And then in the change size function, we'll just change um, this dot brush size to be whatever we pass in from that um, uh, event binding. So we'll do this dot brush size equals size. And hopefully that should work. Okay, so we have our small by default. Let's try click on, actually that's not, that's 10 by default, uh, which is which is actually the, uh, the medium size. Uh, so we'll try change this to small. And you can see now we have a, a thinner brush size. And we'll go back to medium and then large again. And we should be able to go one more size to extra large. We'll change the color as well. Go to extra large and have a big thick red line. Uh, so that's really cool. That's basically doing everything uh, we want it to now. Uh, one thing that we haven't done yet is um, uh, well, we don't really have the ability to uh, erase things. So uh, if we add in a white color, because it's the same color as the background of the canvas, and rather than actually, rather than um, adding that to the available colors array, I'm gonna create a different button here, uh, which is just going to call the same function. And we'll just pass in white manually to that. And so we're just going to call this uh, erase. So it's going to do the same thing as using any other color. We're just creating its own button here. Uh, so let's check if that works. Okay, so let's first messy up the screen a bit. We'll get some stuff going on here, different colors. And now if I click the erase button, should be able to, yeah, just kind of erase things that I've drawn. And then if I change to a different brush size, I can erase a bigger area. Uh, if you wanted, you can also just have a button that would just draw a giant white rectangle over the whole screen and it will get rid of everything at once. And we could even, um. Why don't we put in like an extra, extra large uh, button as well? Yeah, we'll just change that to 200 even. And so let's draw on the screen again. And now if we select a raise and then extra large, we can sort of cover a big chunk of the screen. So that's gonna make it easier to wipe out the whole screen. Okay, so that is pretty much it for this tutorial. As I mentioned, I am going to do a follow-up blog post for this like I usually do with these type of videos because they're not planned out. I make it up as I go along. Uh, usually things end up being a bit, a little bit messy and I try and take a few shortcuts so the video doesn't go too long. So um, I'll add in things like better um, buttons for the colors uh, and same for the brush sizes here. Um, but the general layout actually doesn't look too bad. I think it's kind of a cool uh, simplistic layout with the toolbars at the top and the bottom. Uh, so yeah, overall really happy with uh, this and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.